Hi, I'm Chip Wood. In the previous episode, we looked at how to set up GarageBand for voiceover. Now let's look at the various parts of the interface and the basics of editing voiceover. As we look at this interface, you'll see that this upper part is the track pane, or the timeline, while this lower part is the editing pane. In the editing pane, this upper field is used to move the waveform, while the lower field is used to edit the waveform. To undo an incomplete edit, just click outside the pane. The timeline is a condensed view of the editing pane. In the lower panel, we zoom into one second here for greater ease of editing, while up here in the timeline, three seconds occupy the same space. So when we hit play, you can see that the cursor moves more quickly in the editing pane because the timeline is a condensed view. An attempt to edit the very beginning of the track will not be possible if you do this. If you click and drag and hit delete, nothing happens. Instead, you'll need to grab this handle and pull it inwards. So moving a handle or highlighting an area and deleting it both accomplish the same thing. Here I'll highlight and delete. There are two ways to initiate play, but before we look at that, let's go to System Preferences to enable some trackpad shortcuts. Go to Trackpad, point and click, then enable Secondary Click and Tap to Click. This will enable you to tap or double tap without fully depressing the trackpad. In the timeline, click in this area to begin play. You can also begin play in the editing pane down here. In both panes, you can use either the space bar or a double tap to begin play. To delete, you can click, drag and delete, select a region and delete, or do the same in the timeline. Another way to delete is to grab the handle at the beginning or end of a region and drag it to the desired point. Let's begin editing. You can move the timeline with two fingers on the trackpad. The next sentence begins here, so we'll click, drag, and delete. Click and drag the next region forward. Now go back to the previous region, click in it, and play. A good shortcut for going back is to use the comma key, which will jump backwards two seconds at a time. The reason it's important to go back to the previous region to begin playing is because this icon here, Catch Playhead, will deactivate if you do not click in the previous region. That means that the waveform in the lower display will not continue moving forward. Let me demonstrate that. I'm going to click, drag, and delete, hit play, and the editing pane stops moving. So it's always best to make your edit, come back, and review it. This is good practice anyway because when you go back and review your edit, you can make sure that it's clean. However, if you do make an edit and don't click in the previous region to start the playhead, use the accent key in the upper left-hand corner of the Mac keyboard to resume scrolling in the editing pane. So, for example, if I click play here, I can click the accent key and it will sync up. So whatever region you select, whether it be in the timeline or the editing pane, it becomes the active region for editing. This is important because if you have all of the regions highlighted like this, then come down here and try to edit a single region, all of the regions will be adjusted in the same manner, which is a nightmare. So to deselect all of those, I'll click outside the tracks, and once again I'm able to edit a single region. A useful method for selecting several regions at the same time is to click, then shift click, and that will enable you to move groups of regions. I'll click outside the track to clear that. You can do the same thing if you click and drag across several regions. So again, I'll click and drag to select all four, and then move them to the left to eliminate this space. Before I begin editing, I'll arrow up and down to highlight the entire track and hit Command J and Enter to join them all. Now I'm ready to begin editing. Now let's export this track. The client's name is Davi, destination is the desktop, MP3, high quality, 
and this is very important, export cycle area or length of selected regions. This will ensure that the file renders only to the end of the project. And here's my file on the desktop, rendered to the correct length. Now, let me show you the mess that occurs if you do not tick the box Export Cycle Area. It will render your selected track to the length of the longest track in your timeline. So, let's say that I fail to select the four regions of this 18-second track. When I go to Export, you'll see that box grayed out, and it will render to the length of the longest track in the timeline, and now your short track is 12 minutes long. We don't want that. So to avoid that, either click here in the track description to select all the regions, or more easily, simply arrow up and down. And that will enable you to render to the correct length. Anytime you're ready to save a project, hit Command S, give it a title, and we'll save this to the GarageBand folder. Now let's see where your files are going to reside. Go to Finder, Music, select GarageBand, and here are all my projects. Please subscribe below if you find these tutorials helpful. Thanks for watching.